Welcome back, everybody. This is Mike with Foxes Abroad. We've got Pete and John here. Hello. And uh, we're back finally for a Wednesday evening because uh, we got a couple of parts in that uh, we can uh, get our projects going and moving forward a little bit. And the big thing today was we got the oil pan on finally. It's all sealed up on the 302 project build we got. And over here are the early Mustang high post style exhaust manifolds. So word on the street was these will work with the GT40 P heads because the spark plug angle. And we're gonna get one of those up here. And I got the proper bolt kits you know, with the, uh, the locking tabs and everything to go with them. So let's try that one first. And get them on here. You need to be a white victim. <laughs> They're not that heavy. So. So, all right, just kind of shift it to the rear. If there we go, or to the front. Give ourselves some space and just snug them up real quick. All right. <laughs> so, as you can see, we got a good lineup for all the plugs. It'll be a little tighter, I think, on number. Uh, six right there. Let's get them the rest of them, but we have a plug wire here So so number six looks like the tightest one. Oh, I think it's good. Yeah. Oh, we got air gap. Yeah, as long as it's not touching. Yeah so We can get the other side on but I think the other side's gonna be the same. Bring it back in just a second as soon as we get it bolted up. Just like that. Actually, you don't need gaskets with cast iron manifolds. Really? Yeah, because they'll just seal up just nice. Even if you just want to put a, a ring of a like high temp RTV. Yeah, you got plenty of room. There's almost more room. See, I wouldn't that. know that, John, because I've never messed with cast iron. <laughs> well, <laughs> even on this, even on the coupe with the turbo manifolds, there's no gaskets. Yeah. It's just a ring of high temp there you go. RTV. There's something every day. That was yeah. a tight one, and there's plenty of room there. Oh, too. there's more room on this side than the other side. Yep. But that's the tightest one for here, it looks like. Yeah. So. John can get his finger in there. Yeah, it's <laughs> shocker there. <isn't> it? So, <laughs> high exhaust manifolds are way to go. I mean, I, even the stock manifolds probably would work with the P heads, but uh, we're going for something a little bit special here. I think once these are cleaned up, I have some POR 15 cast iron uh, manifold paint I'm going to put on there. We're going to paint the block blue this weekend, waiting on rocker arms and push rods, but uh. We can get this thing painted here soon. You can see the front dress is all together. I got a pulley specific for the or late model block with the early model style water pump. So it's a three inch space from the flange on the water pump to the flange on the mounting surface for the balancer. All I gotta do is get a, uh, a decent pulley because I have two rib pulleys, which I'm just used for mock up, making sure that everything's spaced properly but I want to get a, a single rib pulley, make it all look nice. So, but that I'll have to wait till next month after Christmas, cause I is broke. <laughs> cause the POR stuff. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to do to the POR, I mean POR. <laughs> yeah. How's he broke when he's spending our, our money? money. Yeah, that's, huh? that's a great question. I'm not spending your money on my parts. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know, I'm pretty sure my credit card's been run up with some Mike Zapp orders. <laughs> So I don't even really want to use the roller rockers. I'm looking for a set of stamped steel ones. I've had so many sets in the past. <laughs> I've thrown away and scrapped and stuff. And now that I want a set, there's nowhere to be had. I need to press forward as much as I can. And uh, probably the next time you guys see this thing, it'll be almost ready to run. I hope so. Did you, uh, do you want to talk about any massaging for that? Because, you know, there are going to be the haters out there going, oh, oh my well, God, you're using manifolds I mean, on a GTP yeah, head. No, well, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll run great. <laughs> I mean, I think this will be every bit of 300 horse to the rear wheels. Yep. With the F-cam, with this intake, six, probably 600, and some good exhaust. I mean, <laughs> ported to the G40Ps, guys have been doing 300 of the rear wheels for a long time with EFI manifolds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, it, it, it may be 
a little bit soft on the very bottom, but it'll come alive pretty quick. Oh yeah. They'll, you'll never notice it with in a vintage Mustang that's lighter. So especially with one that's with a manual transmission. And uh, I think it's running good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to round out this, uh, it was Wednesday. I started to rebuild the distributor for the 302 project. So I was making a whole neat video and got the distributor all sandblasted up, cleaned all the guts out, had it all looking beautiful. I got a brand new distributor drive gear, got an Edelbrock one, because I've done, I pulled the gears off all these lots of distributors in the past, you know, to convert them over to for steel roller cam. And uh, all the old iron gears that you save, they're like, oh, they're perfectly good, I'll use one one day. I've never used one, ever. So and I got a box of the distributor down here with gears still on them. I got to pull off, but so the story. So bought a steel gear, went to go install it. And the gear just goes right all the way up the shaft. And it doesn't grip at all because it's supposed to be a, like a, a two thousandths interference fit. So you buy these gears based on the internal size of the hole and the distributor gear shaft measures out at 467 thousandths and even i don't know if you can read it here with a 4.467 inch shaft so this is the gear you buy from edelbrock that's supposed to work but this hole is exactly 467 thousandths so there's no interference fit and you measure any of these old cast iron gears and they're 465 thousandths so there's two thousandths of an interference fit when you're pressing this gear back onto the shaft so that didn't fit, so I ordered myself a second one. <laughs> Called Sum It Up. They, they didn't want to even want me to send the other one back. So sent me another one. Just got it today. And lo and behold, it sucks. It's the same thing. <laughs> so <sighs> So what plan B? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick a different manufacturer, I guess, but yeah. I, but this is a, is reasonably priced. But the other ones are like a hundred dollars for a gear. So just to be able to run a steel gear for your roller cam. Guess we're gonna be all spending about a hundred bucks. Yeah, excuse me. But whew. so I gotta call them back, figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. But and the distributor just sits there waiting to get done. Kicking the ding ding. Yeah. I mean you can tell they're both made in the same place, made in China. They got the same Chineseum. White paint dabs on them and B twenty three, whatever the heck that means. It's the same guy, Show is his name. I have another gear, B19, but that was from something in the past. I can't remember what it was, but it's the same deal. So whoever making these gears. <laughs> Non-interference of Yeah. So I got this bronze gear that I may run. It doesn't look like it's ever been used. It'll work, but I'm kind of dubious on longevity of them. So I don't know. That's an option. If I can't get hold of any decent, reasonably priced gear, you don't run the bronze one. Other than that, uh, just waiting for some parts. We're always waiting for parts. Yeah, yeah over here we are. Foxy's abroad. Foxy's abroad. He's <laughs> delay, delay, delay. Oh. Yeah, it's just, sorry guys for, I mean, I told you I don't upload a video if I don't have any content. Like I don't show you like loosening a bolt and wasting you 15, 20 minutes on something nonsense. But for my a newer Mustang, we got a shipment from LMR in. And <laughs> I bought the last two NOS uh, 10 to 14 headlights for GT. So GT lights means the interior ones are black instead of chrome. Because I had these set of headlights shipped from the States and if you don't package them right, the tabs get sheared off. The little ears. So where's the other one? I think it's here, but yeah. So the tabs got sheared off. So all the money I saved, getting a nice set of used headlights with probably hardly any miles on it for 50 bucks, it was all wasted because they got broken in shipment. And you can't glue this stuff. I don't know what kind of plastic it's made out of, but nothing sticks to it. And uh, it's very disappointing. So I bought, the last two headlights that LMR had 
getting ready for next spring when I go to put them on the car because my headlight lenses are cracked and crazed from years of use. So they took them out of the boxes, <laughs> cut the stickers off, put these in other boxes and then shipped it all to me together. So now I got to figure out where to store these in my no space garage <laughs> until next spring when I get ready to use them. <laughs> so thanks, Elmar. I was going to say, say thank you, Elmar. <laughs> I don't know who they got their packaging department, but I just kind of, I opened the box and I'm like, yeah, what the heck is going on? It's the same guy who's machining these gears for the distributor. Yeah. Apparently. You no, got the camera, uh, right? You got the we, we Well, we do have one more week before Christmas, and uh, so we don't know what we're going to do for next week, but we're probably going to have one more Wednesday uh, together, and then we'll have our Christmas break, and then um, hopefully some more parts have been trickling in by then. Maybe I'll have some Christmas presents yep. to myself, from myself. I'll get to share. <laughs> I've got a lot of Christmas presents for myself. They're on order. So, <laughs> so I think next week we'll be at Pete's and we'll be doing some, uh, starting a big project for a little bit of a reward, but, uh, yeah, yeah. it's a necessity. Yeah, a lot, it's going to be a lot of work yeah. but... to change a $45 part. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we telling what we're doing or are we just going to leave it at that? Well, we're going to try to fix Pete's oil pressure problem yeah. at idle and we're going to be. We're going to show you the difference between a standard volume oil pump on 2050 oil versus a high volume oil pump in his engine with like 5W30 oil. And sawdust. Uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't agree to 530. <laughs> well, <laughs> what you didn't know is you're also buying more oil. So there. Oh, you know, no. and, and sawdust because we're going to need that. We well, do some more work to pay for the oil. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting video because uh, I'm. it won't all be done in one week but I'd like to make a, a one big video of the whole process, show you what it was before and what it was after. Yeah. And uh, I think that'd be interesting for some people because they have a high tendency for people to just slam a high volume or high pressure oil pump in an engine with stock oil clearances and think that it's gonna be good when it's gonna be way overkill. Yeah. So Pete's situation is unique. We'll, ex we'll talk about that and that's what's coming up. Yeah, basically so. not every oil application is the same. We all have mm -hmm. different needs and so. get it. All right, real close to a thousand subscribers. Last time I saw it was like 982 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's kind of neat. And yeah. uh, share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. No, I never say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> he asked me if you spoil the video now, John. Yeah, but no, I know I'm not spoiling the squat. So. All right, guys, thanks a lot for sticking around. Talk to you soon. All right, share, like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>